This is a sad but true video. My birth parents were pieces of crap. My birth mother is dead now. However, we did get to talk before she did die. And I questioned her about everything that I remembered and she admitted to it and apologized and I told her I forgave her. It doesn't mean it makes all the pain go away because it doesn't. I did the same to my birth father because they were still together when she died and he denied it. He said I was brainwashed by social services. Okay. And then claims not to know anything that happened to me when I was five. I don't know who did it to me. I couldn't tell you. I just know that I was asleep on the couch in the living room, waiting for Jason to get back in. Everybody else was gone from the house, but we stayed alone a lot. We were left alone a lot. Um which was good for us because if they were there doing drugs, then we were like put into a damn dog kennel once we started moving. At first they start flipping a playpen upside down and us being in that. Then we could get out of that so they got a dog kennel, basically. And uh, they said they did it so we wouldn't wander off and get hurt, but <sighs> heroin is what they were using. And, you know, it knocks people out. They're passed out, unconscious. Matter of fact, my mother taught me how to get a needle out of her neck if she shot up and fell out before she removed it. So I knew if I come in there and found mommy sleeping from her magical medicine, what to do. I thought every child lived like that because I hadn't been around other kids or other families. Anyway, this particular day, I was on the couch asleep. I got woken up because I felt like I couldn't breathe. And I tried to struggle. And there was a pillow over my face. And I remember saying, Bubby, stop, this ain't funny. And then a voice said, I'm not your Bubby. If you move or scream, I will kill you. I didn't know what he was going to do. What he did. Partly. Screwed me up. He. Um, pulled my pants off. And I remember being so stupid and saying, please don't spank me. I didn't do nothing. I wish he had just spanked me. Because the next thing that happened was the worst pain I can say I ever, well, no, no. My next video I'll make after this, you'll understand why I say that was not the worst pain I've ever felt. Was not. But it still hurt really freaking bad. If there was only a scale from 1 to 10, it was off the charts. And he smelt bad too. Like alcohol and old clothes, old stale clothes. I'm sorry, but when he got done doing what he was doing, He took a knife and he cut the top part of my, you know, like where pubic hair would end up growing. And he said, if you keep bleeding, you tell him you fell off of a bike or the bike hurt you. And then he said, I'm going to leave, but if you move that pillow, I will know it and I'll kill you. You're not to see me. So I kept the pillow on my face. I just lifted up a little bit so I could breathe better. 
And then the next thing I know, Jason was in there. And he's seen the blood everywhere. And he's like, oh, my God, sissy. And he pulled the pillow off. He said, I thought they had killed you. I said, who did you see him? He said, no, I thought daddy or somebody did. He said, what happened? And I told him. And he went and ran a bath, washed me off. And then he tried to get Band-Aids and put on me. I don't know why adults find children sexually attractive. That is so sick and so nasty. And no child, I promise you, even if it's a little girl who's joking that you're her boyfriend, she doesn't know about that. And she doesn't want to know about that, really. So, after he got me all cleaned up, I told him we couldn't tell nobody at all that I didn't know who did it. And then he said, do you think it was dad? And I said, do you think he would do that to me? I said, it hurted, Jason. It hurted so bad. <laughs> And um, that caused a lot of problems later on in life. I'll tell you about them, too. But um, I never found out who did it to me. I just know that when I was taken by social services, finally, when they come and got me, and it wasn't at five years old, it was way later. They had taken me to a hospital for a checkup, and there was really bad scarring down there. And um, they could tell even years later what had happened to me because of the amount of scarring. And then that really has played a big part in a lot of things. But, um, you know, I had blocked it out for, like, a long time. And my, my adopted mother had to end up explaining it to me because of a douchebag boyfriend at the age of 16. And I will get into that, but I ain't going to name him. But that was one of the things that was so hard to talk about. And there's a lot more. And I will make my other videos to explain the rest of the story. And no, I'm not um, that guy with the rest of the story. Can't think of his name. On a lighter note, I have a black and white cat named Panda, and I don't know where he is. <sighs> I've got to go find him and feed him. He's mowing. If you know anybody that could be in a danger, even if they're not little kids, in any kind of danger of being raped by a family member or anything like that, please try and help them before it happens. Because once something like that happens, it does leave a stain on your soul. It makes a dirty mark on you that you can't wash off no matter how hard you try. And years does not make it better. Years that go by, it's not something you outgrow, forget. Remember that and stay safe.